Let's begin lesson two in our guide to LiDAR visualization using free and open source software. In this episode, I'm going to cover data manipulation and preparation using Cloud Compare. So at this point, I'm assuming that you have downloaded uh, both QGIS and the associated plugins that I covered in the first video, as well as Cloud Compare, and downloaded a trial data set. Um, I have mine saved. Uh, I've created a file for this project, and uh, this is something I should cover now because um, how you handle and store your data is very important. So if this was in my, my downloads folder still, um, these point clouds that I have here, uh, that would be fine. I could use them, but if I ever cleared my download folder, they would be gone. Um, all these softwares reference other files. They don't actually load them into the project. So it's important to use a regular file structure to store them in a place that's going to stay in the same relative position on your computer uh, throughout time. Um, if you move things, it'll break the connection. You can fix the connection, but it's kind of a huge pain. So I try to be really organized. So um, whenever I create a new project, I'm going to create the project folder, which I have here, which is what I have open. Uh, I generally create a folder for LiDAR. And then I'll have one for raster, which will be my raster products. And we probably won't make any vectors in this tutorial, but we might in the future. And I generally produce some vectors, so I'll also have vector. And I'll store my QGIS project file within this folder as well. That way the relative paths all stay together. If I wanted to transfer this to someone else or a different computer, I could transfer the whole you know, file folder over. All the relative paths are the same, and so it all stays together. All right, so we have downloaded our trial LiDAR data set. These are uh, some tiles that I downloaded at an earlier date earlier today. It took forever on my hotel Wi-Fi, as I stated in my previous video. So we're going to open Cloud Compare first. Like QGIS, Cloud Compare is a very powerful open source software. Uh, it's really great. I use it all the time. Um, you can use it for anything from USGS Aerial LiDAR to iPhone LiDAR. I use it for that all the time. Uh, it's a really powerful tool and uh, I've kind of stuck with using it even though I don't need the functionality now that uh, QGIS has built in uh, point cloud tools. Um, I've continued using this because I prefer it and it's, it's not very hard. It's just one more thing to download. Um, it's pretty straightforward and it's a really great program. So it's going to be really complicated here. We're going to open our LiDAR folder. We're going to select all the tiles we want to use. And then we're just going to drag and drop them. You can see how it says copy. That is all there is to it, to put it into Cloud Compare. So here you can see some associated data that goes with all of our points. I don't need all of these. Um, this USGS data has already been classified. That's really all I care about. Um, so I'm going to leave classification checked. I don't need to know time, number of returns, scan direction, scan angle. I am going to keep intensity. Going to uncheck user data, edge of flight line, return number, and point source, I, point source ID. And we're going to click apply all. That's going to apply this setting to every tile that I loaded in, all six of them. And then here we're going to get this pop-up box for the global shift and scale. This is just a computer trick to make the data work better. I, I'm not going to explain it any more than that. Anyway, it just plays around with the decimal point in the locations of where the individual points are. And then it's going to fix them automatically at the end. So we're just going to say yes to all on this as well. So now we're going to load our LiDAR tiles. This might take a little bit. 14 million points in that one. 32 in that one. I don't think we'll get up too high here. And uh, it's important to note, I've got a decent computer. I've got 32 gigs of RAM. I think I've got a 13th gen i7 processor and a dedicated uh, graphics card. It's just like a typical workstation laptop. Uh, nothing crazy. I have done this on my old laptop, which was five years old at 16 gigs of RAM. And I think in older, you know, a really old i5. I processed a cloud that was uh, almost 270 million points. I had to get really creative, run things in the command line, 
kind of play around my order of operations, but you don't need a supercomputer to do this. Uh, to do these six tiles, you could do the, you should be able to do this on your home computer. Um, so it looks like our last one is loading in now. There we go. Now we have all six tiles. You can see they make a nice tidy square. And this is showing intensity right now. Intensity is basically how bright the reflected return was from the, the laser that was shined down from the, the device and then uh, returned back to the aircraft in this, uh, in this case, to the sensor in the aircraft. Um, so while we're at the screen, I'm going to cover something. Uh, it, it's just convenient to see it here. You can see I've got this console at the bottom. Let me expand this, maybe, if I can. Yeah. Or not. I'll just scroll up. This console has information about what we've just done. So let me scroll back up to the top where I was. There we go. All right, so this is one of the tiles that we loaded in. And this is telling us about its coordinate reference system. So all of this mumbo jumbo here is stating exactly what the datums are for this data. So a vertical datum, an angle datum, a unit for, for the data, all of these things. Um, so uh, you can see in the beginning it says uh, NAD 83 2011 and UTM zone 15 north. It's using NAVD 88 for the height. And then we've got some more information here. And I can scroll across. You can see it's got all these EPSIG authority, authority, authority. Once you've seen enough of these, you'll be able to pick out what you're looking for. So let me just scroll over here to, uh, here we go. Units are in meters. That's nice. Um, here we go. X-axis, Y-axis, authority, EPSIG 6344. I don't know if you remember my previous video. I had my coordinate reference system set to EPSIG 6344. This is the number that I'm looking to get from this line. That's the number that I can type into the search bar uh, when I'm under the coordinate reference system selector in QGIS to put it in the correct UTM 15 North. Because believe it or not, there are many, there's much more than one UTM 15 North. We want a specific 15 North. It's in meters. It's very important that our units are in meters for our data. Um, <clears throat> there are data sets on USGS. Uh, particularly, I find this when I'm doing uh, work in Illinois for work. A lot of times it'll be in state plane feet. And I need to reproject that into uh, a meter based coordinate reference system before I can use that uh, that one LIDAR uh, plugin, the, the processing plugin. Um, I'm not going to cover this in, that in this video. I might do a separate video just on that. I, you shouldn't need that from the start. That's more of an uncommon use case, but I do run into it all the time, so it's important. Uh, that you know how to do that eventually. But for now, the important number we want to get from this line is this EPSIG 6344. If I didn't know that, have that memorized, I would write that down. That's going to be my coordinate reference system for my project because it is a reasonable coordinate reference system to use. Um, for work, I work for an engineering firm, so most of the time we're using state plane. I work in state plane a lot. Uh, UTM is my personal preference. There have been entire novel sized books written about coordinate reference systems. I won't attempt to uh, claim to understand them or explain them today. I just know uh, ones that work pretty well for the scale that I'm looking at. And more importantly, my data is already in that coordinate reference system. And so I'm going to keep it in the same. <clears throat> All right, so we have these six tiles. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll just click, hold down shift, click again, and I've selected all of them. The first thing I'm going to do is go up to the edit and merge. I'm going to merge all of them into one. Do I want to create a scalar field with the original cloud index? I don't care uh, which tile individual piece of data came from, so I'm going to say no. Computer is thinking. that will merge all of these tiles. There we go, we've merged all of them into one. So now I have all my data merged into one tile. 
So I'm still viewing intensity here. I'll just zoom in so you can kind of see what this looks like. I'm zooming in and out using the scroll wheel. Uh, left click will rotate and right click moves me on the tile. Moves my location that I'm focused on. So I'm just scrolling in, I'm zooming in. And I like intensity because you can kind of see what's going on better than if this were a, uh, you can kind of see some hills in the background. So you can kind of get a 3D sense of what's going on here. <clears throat> Let me click another option for you. We'll go to edit, colors, height ramp. I'm just going to keep the default. No sense playing with that now. Do OK. So now we got a height ramp. So this is a this is a lot more clear. I feel like you can understand this. We've got some highs here that are orange going down to the blues that are lows. We've got some missing areas uh, where we had water. Water uh, is problematic for lidar because it's so reflective. <clears throat> so a lot of times those will be uh, those will be filtered out. So what you're seeing here, these kind of green round things, that's the tops of trees. So within this data set, uh, this data has been classified already for us by the USGS, which is very nice of them because it uh, was very uh, very process intensive to uh, process a raw point cloud into ground only points and uh, would be a much more complicated video than I'm making today. But just understand for right now, here's a little bit better view, this makes a little more sense visually, that they've already classified this. So what we want to do, uh, this each point is given a class. I think it goes 1 through 17 or something like that. <clears throat> the, the classification for ground is 2. So we want to deforest the earth. We want only ground points. So while I have this selected still, I'm going to scroll down in my properties. And here where it says intensity, I'm going to change that to classification. So now we are displaying the different classifications uh, based on color. So with this still selected, I'm going to go up to max min, filter points by value. So remember me saying that ground points are uh, designated as two. So I want to filter out all the twos. So I'm going to select range of two to two. That will capture only twos. Uh, you can either choose export or split. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. I always hit export. One might split them within this folder structure and the other one exports it out. Okay, so now this has only the ground points. You can see if I toggle this back on, we have other points that show up. Let me zoom out, maybe it'll be more apparent. I'll go back to a top view. All right, so I'll toggle this back on. So that's with all the points. And this is just ground. So I want just ground. So with this highlighted still, now we're going to save this. We're going to go to File, Save. And since I have this layer selected, that's all I'm going to save. So I'm going to do Save. And we'll go into my folder. And I'm going to save this under LiDAR. These are my original tiles. And we're just going to rename this Merged Classified, because those are the operations we have done on this. Um, and we're going to save this in the format LAS, uh, LEZ is the compressed version of an LAS. That's just a common format. Uh, that's usually what USGS data comes from. And that's my personal uh, preference for this. There's lots of, there's tons of different formats, E57, uh, points, uh, all kinds. Um, but we're going to keep it as an LES. We're going to do save. All right, uh, there's some questions here about resolution. You can do original resolution. Um, I usually choose optimal. I don't really care if I care about the compression efficiency. I want the, the max, the max resolution, max data. So we're going to select optimal and do OK. And we've got 40 million ground points in that square I had selected. And you'll notice this is a different area uh, than I had highlighted before. Uh, I did that on purpose. Uh, this is an area that I have interest in. It is a very, very historic district in Missouri. And uh, the feature we are going to pick out of this landscape 
is on private property. So I'm going to do my best to uh, keep that, uh, you know, keep that card uh, out of view from you guys. I'm sure anyone that is astute could uh, look this up from even just the little information I've shown here. But uh, just keep in mind this is on private property. Be respectful. Don't try and go out here and look up this uh, cool thing that we're going to find. Um, so we've now classified and merged our data and saved it. So we are all done with the cloud compare step. Um, join me in the next video and uh, I'll show you the next step of processing the, these raw points into a, uh, a usable data set for visualization.